Good day, class. We are now going to talk about another lesson that will prepare us for the actual conduct of your proposal study. Let's now talk about formulating a research problem. On this lesson, let's focus on the context of identifying a qualitative research problem. Make sure to take down notes and write down important questions that will help you understand the lesson better. I would just like to give you a heads up that you might hear possible background noises considering that I am working from home. So I would like to apologize in advance, but nonetheless, let's make sure that we are able to learn and hear best the audio of this presentation or this lecture video. Now let's begin. I want you to focus on this still image. I won't go and one by one identify the images or the subject in the photo, but instead ask you, how could you best describe the mountain? The mountain ranges in the photo class seems quite far from your point of view or from where you are standing. This gives us now the gap to what you think or what you perceive about the mountains in the photo to what is actually in the mountains that is in the ranges or that is in the mountain ranges. This poses now a huge question or a gap to us from where we are standing to the mountain that we are trying to describe. That is also similar to how we are going to have our lesson for today. We are going to thought or we are going to talk about a particular gap on a study or on a topic that through our conduct of our research, we are going to find a solution. All right, let's continue. Now for this lesson, we need to target the following learning objectives. First, we need to identify a qualitative research problem from a general topic of interest. Second, we need to develop a working title based on the research problem. And third, we need to justify the relevance of the research problem. Now, let's go through these discussions and keeping in mind the objectives that we need to attain or we need to achieve. First, I want you to remember that in identifying a research problem, a study always starts with a problem to solve. No research study starts without a credible problem. You always need to identify a gap about the topic of interest in order for you to conduct a credible and an effective research study. Read available source materials about your topic to identify, number one, what is already known, and number two, what is still unknown about your topic. This is important in order for you to determine what are you going to look for in your topic. What have been found out, what have been uh, deciphered no, out of previous research studies, and what is still unknown that could become a beacon for your research study's credibility. Because out of your research study, din na to mahibalan, right? The possible implications of these factors in your study that you are conducting. So always remember, class, that when we are going to identify possible research problems, always read no the materials or source materials available in your topic of interest to determine what is already known and what is still unknown about your topic. Now, we also need to formulate research problems that are SMART. What's the meaning of the abbreviation SMART? Of course, we have the specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Always remember that your research problem will be needing a solution eventually in the conduct of your research study. Always keep in mind that your solutions must follow SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely goals. Considering that this is going to be focused on the lenses or the context of qualitative research studies, we need to understand right, that our discussions are going to zero in on non-numerical factors but instead on as, uh, concepts or ideas that can be applied right, in solving a particular research problem. Now, here are some good tips that we can ponder on. A good research problem class is usually based on unknown information about your topic. 
Now, let's consider that, that there are constraints or limitations such as time and budget when refining the research problem. Therefore, it is beneficial, right? It is beneficial in order for you to come up with your research problems if you consider, right, the constraints or limitations to help you identify possible solutions and possible ways of creating the most practical research problems and solutions. Now, let's narrow down general and broad topics. In this example class, we are going to learn that research problems or conducting your research in a qualitative context will always begin with a general or broad topic. From there, we narrow it down to the specific topic and the research topic that we have. This applies not only to qualitative study, but can also be applied to quantitative study. First is the general topic. An example given here is computer or mobile phone application. To specify it, to science, games, and education. Next, we conduct now the research study by crafting the research topic use of science mobile apps in engaging students. Now, in doing so, we are making sure that there is a systematic process of narrowing down the topics from broad or general topics all the way up until your specific research problem or research topic. Now, with the research pro we need to remember that this question is very essential in determining whether your research problem is actually credible or useful. With a research problem I have in mind, can I solve the research gap? How am I going to fill in that gap? Always remember to ensure that there are credible sources that you are going to read from in order for you to make sure that your research problem is valid, accepted, and is useful. Now, a, quality, a qualitative research problem is a research problem that is considered to be a research problem is considered to be qualitative when the nature of answering it is on making meanings from non-numerical information. Meaning, ang imuhang mga tubag sa imuhang pangotana does not need any numbers or any numerical information but can be answered through theory, can be answered through actual testing without considering the numerical values or the numerical factor. Examples. When we are going to talk about accounting, one of your qualitative research problem could be the use of instant, instant online loans among different age groups. For business, styles of conflict management in startup businesses. If you can observe, there is no need for numerical or for yeah, for numerical information, rather we can get our answers or we can get the problems, the research problems out of non-numerical informations. Earth science, disaster management in key cities, health science, vaccination confidence across generations. Social sciences, identity politics of the urban poor, humanities, creation theories in Asian countries. <clears throat> To guide you in writing a working study title, always remember that it must answer the following questions. Number one, what type of research will it use? What is the study all about? Who is involved in the research and where will the study happen? Now, in doing so, we need to remember that the relevance of the research describes the reasons or justifications for the conduct of the study. Your research study must be relevant in order for it to be justified as you conduct the particular study. Question. What makes a research problem relevant? Remember, a good research problem has clear scientific, social, and but practical relevance. It needs to be relevant in these key areas. All right. Now, this time, I want you to go in and write these key points as we wrap up our discussion. The research problem class is the central basis for the other parts of the research. Then again, saying, no, walay problema, ayaw naghagohagwa mo sarili. Don't research about it anymore. 
The research process starts with identifying a broad topic of interest and narrowing it down to a more specific topic. Qualitative research deals with understanding, describing, and drawing out meaning from non-numerical information. Meaning to say, your problems or your research study does not need to conduct does not need to be conducted by scouring and getting numerical information. It can already be answered, understood, described, and information drawn out based from non-numerical information. The research title describes what the research is all about and is based on the statement of the research problem. The relevance of the research describes the importance and justification for conducting the research study. Now, whether be it qualitative or quantitative research, we always begin with this process. It starts with a broad topic, narrowed down to a specific topic. And then from there, we identify the research problem in order for us to craft a working research title. Now, if there are questions with our discussion, make sure that you are writing it down so that we can cater them during our online classes. Go back to this video from time to time if you are confused in answering your modules and may this lecture video aid you in answering the quizzes that follow. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to be updated on lecture videos that will be posted on this YouTube channel. God bless and keep safe.